we have found within agriculture, uh, you, you know, we all know in 20 years things will be heavily automated, but what people disagree on is how things actually begin. Uh, and so we believe that they start with collaborative robots that help people work more productively and over time do more and more things autonomously as well, which is what Burrow is. It's okay, so what problems specifically are you trying to solve? In a field of something like table grapes, blueberries, you know, any, any hand harvested fruit, you'll have typically, you know, 30, 40 year old people and they're harvesting fruit and then running around with two or three hundred pound wheelbarrows in high heat. So, and what is your solution to the problem? So the product is called Burrow. Imagine an autonomous, effectively an autonomous wheeled donkey uh, that runs around in the field carrying stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so very, very simple concept. I think simple things in autonomy are actually very difficult to do. So our robot uh, follows people to learn routes and then it's able to retrace those paths autonomously on its own while doing pretty sophisticated obstacle handling and path planning up and down and within roads. But, but while doing all of that, it's, it's carrying things back and forth so people will stand in place. And the, the progression in our heads is that we start with a virtual conveyor belt back and forth, and we've got this vision-heavy platform that over time can modularly do more and more things autonomously as well. So obviously there's a lot of companies out there doing uh, you know, autonomous vehicles, uh, autonomous warehouse fulfillment, things like that. What, are, what problems are specific to getting this to work in the field? Terry, my co-founder, has a, a term for the, the overall architecture of how we do things, and that term is pop-up autonomy. Um, it's you imagine in a warehouse, you have all sorts of infrastructure. You know, systems are installed, they're following tape on the ground, they're indoors, they're well lit, the lighting is consistent, uh, the scene is remarkably static. In a table grave field or table grave vineyard out in California, you'll have three or 4,000 people that show up to pick fruit every day. They are running around, lighting is changing, there's dust everywhere, the conditions are highly variable, and so robots have to be able to handle the terrain and the, and the situation very dynamically. And so with pop-up autonomy, which is what our robot does, you train the robots over relatively short routes, and they're able to build those short routes into larger and larger autonomous progressions, um, which is something very unique we haven't seen anywhere else. So it's learning that specific route for that day and then the next day starts over and it needs to relearn? It's hard to describe in abstract. Um, so very, very specific terminology. In, in a, a typical hand harvesting operation, you'll have a bunch of pack tables. So those are where the fruit gets packed to go off to the mm -hmm. grocery store. And then you'll have you know, 600 or 1200 foot long rows. People go all the way down, down those rows to pick and then they're shuttling stuff back and forth. With our robots, the people at the tables train them by having the robot follow them to, from the pack tables to the beginning of the rows, and the robots know, hey, I'm in a row, go down the row, come back. And so in maybe 20 or 30 seconds in the beginning of the day, the robot's set up, and then for the rest of the day, it's just autonomously shuttling back and forth all day long, and people are just kind of standing in the shade with almost a, a metronome-type device. It's, it's mm -hmm. consistent, um, showing up every seven to 14 minutes, shuttling stuff back and forth for them. And where are you at now? Are these things actually out in the field? Yeah, so last year we had 10 of our Generation 5 units running over about 3,000 autonomous hours in paid trials um, with 15 large growers. We have, we have a big partnership with the California Table Grape Commission, um, which represents a, a you know, broad swath of growers. Um, from those, we refined our autonomy to the point that it's at a commercial grade. And so this season, we have seven of the largest Table Grape growers in the U.S., each of whom have purchased six packs for delivery this year. Um, so that's kind of the initial core customer base, and those seven growers hire a combined 19,000 people to pick fruit every day. Uh, so you imagine one robot for every 10 people, you're starting to look at a lot of volume. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.